have your players ever wanted to become a member of a secret society? Within your campaign world, do you have an order of holy protectors? Do your players long to join the orders of the Wizards of Dragonlance or the Holy Clerics of Dungeons and Dragons? Well, if they do, then you have come to the right place because in this video, I will be looking at an overview of the orders and brotherhoods in the rule set of Mithras. My name is Inwills and welcome to the In Crowd. One of the reasons I enjoy playing the rule set, which is Mithras, is that it provides so much uniqueness and adaptability for my campaign. When I'm creating a new campaign world, I'm always keen to add orders or brotherhoods, guilds and societies. These might be from the local thieves guild operating in the main town to merchant guilds that spread across the world dealing in goods and commerce. All these guilds and brotherhoods exist mainly in my mind and the characters normally touch on the fringes of these as they encounter certain NPCs. But with the rule set of Mithras this changes because not only can player characters engage with the guilds or brotherhoods, they can actually have the option to join them, to gain benefits from them, to rise up the ranks of them and even become the leaders. So what are orders and brotherhoods? Well, I've decided to split this into a series of videos. This is going to be the first one about these orders and brotherhoods when I'm going to give you an overview. And then we can look in later videos about membership, progression, and maybe even creating them from scratch. Three, two, one. If you have enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing to the channel. Every little bit helps and supports the channel and also takes me one step closer to my dream. So to actually give you some idea about this I thought I would um, tell you about the current um, orders or brotherhoods that exist in my current campaign which is the Odes that you can see us playing live um, on Twitch on a Saturday evening at um, seven o'clock which is summertime. So I have several um, orders within my campaign. First of all I have the religious orders and they're associated with either the old or new gods and goddesses. Bartleby the Thesis belongs to one of these. He is a Thesis of Amriel which is an order of the twin moons. Um, he worships the, the, the bright moon, the clear moon, the um, moon, the goddess of the full moon that actually supports healing and buffing etc. I also have um, sorcery orders and these are separated into the order of the phoenix, the red order, the lich, the black order, the dragon, the white order and the kraken, the blue or um, order. Each of these orders specializes in certain types of spells and Gulliver, the sorcerer from the Odis campaign played by Chuggerwugga, is a member of the order of the Kraken who specialize in teleportation and communication spells. I've also um, created other um, orders and brotherhoods. In fact, um, Hasra, the nomad from the steppes, is a member of a brotherhood called the Brotherhood and these are a group of individuals who are charged with cataloguing the history and changes of the land. Yeah you might have remembered quite recently Hasra recently joined their ranks and um, chose a special um, medallion that he wears around his neck. Now I do have other orders which I've created either for characters or for certain NPCs in the campaign. For example, there's the Guild of Cartographers, which Sylvester McCoon, who lives in um, the major capital city of Odes, Lindo, um, 
is a member of and there's also the beast handlers and there's also some somebody known the guild known as the faculty who actually guards and protects va valuable items so the question is what do these orders actually provide for the characters why should they actually join them now each cult order guild has a certain number of ranks within that order now the ranks are given generic names in the book but you can make them more specific for each sort of order or cult that you actually create and you can see some examples on page 197 of the core rule book essentially the ranks are common dedicated proven overseer and leader now those are the generic names for the ranks but say for example you are in a thesis cult or order then those ranks are changed slightly to include a lay member initiate acolyte priest and high priest but the book refers to the ranks in the over generic the over view or the generic form of the ranks in order so it you can see how they transfer between the cults well apart from being an opportunity for excellent role playing um, because characters will join and have mentors and do they follow the wishes of the order or is there some kind of subterfuge going on or interlink politics etc within the guild there are also other benefits for the characters and these can be separated up into training protection material aid social status magic gifts and for the religious orders divine intervention so the first area is training and as you might have seen from my previous videos about character advancement training is really important and a lot of the orders will actually pro um, provide training in specific skills for its members so this is a really opportunity to actually engage the players more in their training or the advancement of the skills and also allow some kind of specialization you know that members on a particular order or brotherhood actually train certain spells it is all all skills sorry it is also really important when we look at progression through the order which will be a future video you will see that each order requires a certain skill level in certain skills in order to go to the next phase now the training that the order or brotherhood or cult can provide for the player characters is not for free it comes at a discount rate and the discounted rate is aligned to the character's rank so for example a common rank i.e just entering the guild of brotherhood has zero discount rate well the overseer second from the top has 75 percent discount and the leader the high priest has a hundred percent discount on the training costs the second benefit of membership is protection and this could be physical protect protection for example a sanctuary or a place that they can go that they are free from harm or it could be some kind of social protection when the members of the order are really revered and nobody will actually go um, towards them it could even be some kind of political protection so in the sense of a guild of merchants they might have the you know the top duo, um, the top lawyers or barristers of the land actually say no we will protect you in a court of law now many orders and brotherhoods actually provide board and lodgings for its members and this it comes under the category of material aid there are other things that can uh, actually come into this categorization for example it might be something to do with trade deals it might be certain items of equipment that are provided for the um, um, orders members or even it might be a certain um, brooch or talisman that actually they give to the player to sort of like demonstrate that they're actually part of the order 
Um, next up is social status. And as you can imagine, this needs no explanation. This really depends on your campaign or your um, story setting, how this actually um, portrays itself within the campaign world. Should members of the society um, keep their identity hidden? Is it something that people are very wary of and don't like um, seeing people of this order? Or is it quite quite the opposite way and they are seen as great protectors and people encounter them are in awe and wonder of their expertise. I'm going to link the next two together because they're magic and divine intervention. Now magic really refers to orders that are providing certain spells for its members. So for example in the campaign world with um, Gulliver, he only, within the order of the Kraken, there are only certain spells that he can learn. Um, in orders that are religious, the miracles that Thesis cast tend to be associated with rank and therefore a high priestess might be the only one who can actually resurrect um, characters from the dead and hence the limitation on the the game not the uh, first level or a character just starting out is very unlikely to be a high priestess or priest but if you do want to run that sort of campaign, then they might be the person, who, the only person in the whole of the world who has resurrection. Now, the next area of the Order of the Brotherhood, I haven't actually implemented within my campaign yet because they, it is related, in my opinion, to ranks higher than just the initiative or the um, um, common ranks. And these are gifts. Now you can find a complete list of um, sample gifts on page 102, I think, um, of the core rule book. Um, it might be, yeah, 102. And for example, things like this might be um, something to do with healthiness. The character's heal rate is doubled or in vulnerability. Character is invulnerable to damage from a certain type of weapon or even something like an animal familiar. Um, so there's a huge amount of opportunities there. However, I tend to leave that for the higher ranks. So in the next video, I'm going to talk about joining cults or brotherhoods and also the restrictions that they might impose. But if you're longing to get your teeth into some wonderful brotherhood action, then there are some sample um, cults and brotherhoods on page 112 of the core rulebook. So go along and have a look. Their names are there, but also the standard skills that they um, actually produced uh, allow training on and also some of the professional skills as well. And that's it for the first video on orders and brotherhoods. Please, if you have enjoyed this video, then consider either liking, commenting or subscribing to this channel. And don't forget to press that bell button so you will get notified when the next video comes, uh, is uploaded and becomes live. So please do come back I and mean, in the next episode we'll look at membership joining and restrictions so lots more to come and until then i hope that all your opposed roles score high and if you are leveling up you get the maximum on that 1d4 plus one for your percentage of your skills until next time see you later guys and happy mithrasing see ya